Hey guys, this is Brian with Prokashi.com back in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and today I'm going to teach you how to make IMO. IMO is a Korean natural farming input. It stands for indigenous microorganisms. As a natural farmer and uh, at Bokashi Composting, we are basically microbe farmers. And what the objective is in making IMO is to capture local indigenous microorganisms and uh, put them to use in rebuilding our soil and our garden. It's the reason why we want to get indigenous microorganisms is number one, they are indigenous. They are used to living here. They have adapted to the climate, they have adapted to the conditions, and they are the survivors in the bunch. And since they are the survivors in the bunch, chances are they're the strongest ones available. And we want to put them to use for us. So what I'm going to do is tell you uh, how to make IMO uh, 1 through 5. And a lot of people, especially when I started, I got confused. You know, IMO 1, IMO 2, IMO 3, what are all these numbers? IMO 1, 2, 3, and 4 just stands for the stages that you're going to go through. First stage, second stage, third stage. And each stage is unique in its uh, ability to either capture or multiply the uh, indigenous microbes. So let's start with IMO1. IMO1 is where you will take um, some food source. Typically for Korean natural farming it's going to be rice. You could use any kind of starch. You could probably use bread, um, a potato, any food source, but the easiest one and the ones that the Korean natural farming people use is rice. So what you would do is you would take any rice that you want. Uh, natural farming gives you a lot of latitude. You can use organic rice, you can use jasmine rice, you can use brown rice, white rice, instant rice. The microbes really don't care. All they care about is that it's a food source. So what you'll need to do is make yourself some hard-boiled rice. And when you say hard-boiled, I mean that you're going to make rice that's a little bit on the dry side. When you make your rice, just follow the recipe. For instance, the last batch that I made called for one cup of rice with two cups of water. And since I wanted it to be hard boiled or semi dry, I just reduced the amount of water. So I took one cup of rice to one and a half cups of water. So when you make your rice, you want it to be a little bit on the dry side. You don't want it to be sticky and gummy. And you're going to cool it off. When you cool it off, you're going to put it in a container. Traditional methods say that you use a cedar box. Well, I don't have a cedar box. Um, a, any box will do or any container will do. But traditional method is to use a cedar box. So for this instance, I'm just going to use a plastic container. This is just one that had some eclairs in it from the uh, grocery store. And what I'm going to do or what we're going to pretend to do is to take our rice and fill this about one-third full. So in this case, from bottom to here, will be about an inch worth of rice. Now I haven't made any rice because I have it uh, already uh, in the IMO1 stage, which I'll show you in a little bit. But this is just to show you the basics. Take your rice that's cooled off and you want to place it in your container so that you have about two-thirds headspace up above. And that's important because we want the microbes to be able to come in, populate the um, rice, and have room to grow up. So go ahead, take your rice, place it in your container. What you want to do, when we made, uh, in my other video, we made uh, lactic acid bacteria, we covered it with a porous material. So in this case, I'm just using an old uh, white towel. And what you would do, once you have your rice in your container, is you would cover it with this permeable or this uh, non-airtight cover. And the purpose of that is to keep a lot of the uh, stuff that's around you out of the uh, rice culture. The rice, again, is just a food, and the microbes can easily penetrate or go through this. What you're going to want to do is find yourself, uh, depending on which kind of IMO you want, uh, an area to collect your microbes. In this case, I just happened to pick a little bamboo area. Bamboo, according to the Korean natural farmers, is a very bacterially dominated um, material. 
the roots of bamboo exhibit uh, a characteristic of giving off a lot of sugars. And those sugars will tend to attract a lot of bacterially dominated microbes and worms in the soil around it. So you can use um, bamboo, you can use ornamental grasses, any grass uh, will do, and it doesn't seem like it, but bamboo is a grass. And the reason for that is when you have your uh, succession of plants, you have bare ground, you would have the next uh, succession, which would be pioneer weeds uh, that would come in. Then you would get uh, smaller, uh, or the next generation, which would be your grasses. And in that kind of soil, grass soil, and that includes the soil that we would typically have our gardens with, that's bacterially dominated. There are fungi, there is uh, mycelium. And in fact, right here where I dug away, you can actually see some mycelium, or actually mushroom right here. But in grass areas, it's a mixture of the two, but it's predominantly bacteria. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to make uh, both types of IMO. IMO1 is just, like I said, the rice, in collecting the microbes. The difference between bacterial or bamboo microbe and forest microbe is is one bacterially dominated or is one um, fungally dominated. So for this instance we're going to make bamboo microbe and what you would do is you would take your um, material, set it in a bamboo stand underneath a good healthy uh, uh, bamboo area Unfortunately, where I live, this is as good as it gets. So this is really just for demonstration purposes. You'd like to find some place where the bamboo is really tall, really healthy, really thick, and where there's a lot of bamboo litter around. You wanna see a lot of the leaf litter, like this guy right here. And what you'll do is you'll put your materials underneath of there and cover it up. Since we're out in the woods, what you would want to do since that is a food source and you want to keep it away from all the other little critters, you would probably want to take some type of screening material like this and you would want to cover it. That keeps all the guys out, all the mice, snakes, any little critter that would like to eat what's in there. Again, the microbes can easily penetrate through here, obviously penetrate through the um, cloth material, and then they will go in there and populate this. So once you have your bucket, you have your rice, two-thirds airspace on top, your material, and it's protected. You'll want to cover it over with some litter. And in this case, this just happens to be leaf litter. If we were going to do a forest microbe, this would be perfect. You would find an old tree, get yourself an old growth tree, find one that has a lot of humus around the base, a lot of litter one that's very healthy and very uh, vibrant and you would do the same thing you would take your bucket that's one-third full of uh, dry or uh, hard-cooked rice two-thirds airspace cover it cover it again with this cover it with the leaf litter and then you would come back over and cover this with a plastic the reason for the plastic is that you're going to have to leave this in this environment in this wild environment for about five to seven days depending on the temperature you could leave it up to ten days to two weeks um, this is all temperature driven obviously the warmer it is the more microbial activity the faster that the microbes will work their way into the rice and start growing after that time you would come back uncover everything and then if I had had some rice in here, you would see a white fungal growth. I did the same thing. I just showed you the traditional method. I'm going to show you a different, easier way to do it. One alternative to the traditional method of actually going out into the woods like we are now is to take some of this leaf litter with you. And you would take that leaf litter in your house with the same uh, stuff here, put your rice in, two-thirds headspace. You would cover it over with this, but since it's in your house, you would just leave it covered over like that. You don't have to worry about putting the uh, screen to it. And in your garage or in your house or in any warm, quiet spot, what you would do is allow the same process to go on. You could also, 
is a non-traditional method with your rice in here you could actually take some of your leaf litter and just sprinkle it on top so that the rice being underneath the leaf litter on top like this and you would allow it to incubate and you would get the uh, white mycelium underneath at that time when you come back to harvest you would just pull that away and then you would have nothing but your mycelium growing in here um, there's another way that I did I, like I said, I don't have a lot of bamboo, but I do know that bamboo is bacterially dominated. It has a high amount of uh, worm casting, and worm castings or worm poop is very nutritious. So what I did is I did the same process. I took a container, I put in some hard-cooked rice, and I put it in my worm bin. I simulated uh, a bacterially dominated IMO because uh, worm bins are bacterially dominated. They're full of worm poop. I just took this whole process here and took it into my house. And I'm gonna show you how it looks and we're gonna carry on from there. So I'll see you in just a minute. All right guys, I'm back. I'm gonna show you an IMO1 that I made using my worm bin or vermicompost. And again, the reason that I did that is I didn't have a bamboo stand in the good bamboo soil and litter around me. And I know that bamboo is bacterially dominated and that we're using it because of the sugars and we're using it because of the uh, uh, worm castings. So I simulated that by using this, which is my worm bin. Now, as I explained to you uh, across the street, you would take your rice and you would put it in a container. And here's the container that I happen to use. And I put it in uh, an environment, whereas over there I would have had uh, leaf litter and the worm castings. Here I have finished vermicompost. And that's what it looks like if you have a good sec, uh, successful collection. I'm going to pick it up. You'll notice that it grew so successfully that the um, mycelium actually started running well outside of the container. That's at least an inch and a half outside the container. And watch, when you pick it up, the mycelium comes with it. It actually pulls up the uh, vermicompost. And there you go. That mycelium, you can see, is actually growing through the material. So what we do now is this is our IMO1. Now we make IMO2. Once you separate out the... Um, IMO1 from the container. You may have bits and pieces of some of the soil or whatever and that's fine. You can separate it out. I would just leave it in. You'll notice you've got the white mycelium growing like cotton candy on the front and sometimes you'll see different colors. Yellows, greens, reds. That's okay. If you have some colors that's fine. You just don't want it to be black or predominantly black. You want most of that white. What we'll do is we'll take our sugar in a one-to-one -one ratio by weight. So I weighed this out earlier and I found that it's very close to uh, 454 grams or one pound of sugar. If you don't have it exactly right, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be exact. That's the nice thing about natural farming is you can have a lot of latitude left and right. You can be off and it doesn't really make a big difference. But in general, traditional method says uh, by weight, one part sugar, one part of the uh, IMO1. And what you're going to do is you're going to start mixing it. And you want to mix it well. And what you're doing is you're breaking up the mycelium and the rice and the moisture that's in the sugar and you're uh, going to feed and multiply your uh, microbes. This again happens to be a uh, bamboo or bacterially dominated uh, IMO. If this was done in the forest and I'd had uh, humus or leaf litter it would have been a um, 
fungally dominated. And what you're going to notice as you're going along as it starts to incorporate, you see it's kind of sandy right here. As you start getting into it, you're going to notice it's going to start getting gooey. See how it's holding together? See how the water's coming up through my hands, the moisture? That's what you want. You want to mix all of this for a couple minutes or however long it takes to make the whole mixture gooey. You want it to be like what is described as a, a gruel or a uh, very soggy type of oatmeal. So you will notice that it goes through a physical change of state from very dry looking and granulated to this right here where you see it comes through the fingers and you have that moisture. That is what you want. So take whatever time is necessary to go ahead and do that. And when you're done, you're going to transfer all of this into another container. You'll notice that a lot of Korean natural farming is fermentation and growth. Fermentation and growth. So we started with IMO1, which was uh, again our rice and we allowed the uh, bacteria and the fungus to dominate it and to grow on there. This part here is a growth and fermentation. We are fermenting this with sugar and fermentation tends to bring out all of the uh, materials, the uh, nutrient type materials that we want. So now that I've got this basically the way I want it, let me look around, here we go. Take your IMO2 now, because it is now with uh, sugar and microbes, and put it into a container. And again, all you're going to do is allow, to, allow this to set and incubate, or to grow. There you go. And you can put a cover over top of this one as well, just like we did with the other one. You can put a cover of um, paper towel, tissue, uh, t-shirt, whatever you want. And what will happen is, is that it will continue to grow, and in a couple weeks you'll have this. This gooey stuff here is IMO3, or this is prepared IMO2. IMO2, once you've made it, IMO2 after a couple weeks of fermentation. And what I'm going to do next is show you how to take IMO2 and make IMO3. So give me just a few minutes, and we'll be right back.